Hi everybody, my name is Cliff Anderson, and welcome back to this series on Nets Blocks. A lot of programming is about recognizing patterns and then making them simpler to implement in code. In my previous videos, I showed you how to write loops with counter variables. Keeping track of iterations in loops is a common programming task. So it shouldn't come as any surprise that programming language designers have developed a shortcut for writing loops with counters. We'll cover NetsBlock's humble but powerful for loop in this next video. And by the end, you'll be creating for loops with pizzazz. Stick around. Let's begin by exploring the combination of loops and iterators. Let's say we want to have Alonzo count from 1 to 10. In previous videos, we counted our loops by adding a variable to a repeat block. Let's try that approach again, just to refresh our memories. OK, so then we go to Control, and we're going to grab a repeat block, bring it over into the scripting area. Then we need to create a variable, make a variable, We'll call it i for iterator. Now there it is. We can use it. We need to set its value. We want it to be set to 1, I think, for the first iteration. So we'll start with its value at 1. And then we need to change it every time. So we'll put that in here. Change 1. Change i by 1. And then we need to go to looks. And in looks, we want to say something here. And we want to do it for, let's say, half a second. And then we need to grab that variable and drop it in here. OK. So let's try it out. OK. So you see that it's a pretty straightforward way of setting up a counter from 1 to 10. What's the problem with the solution? Nothing really. It just creates a bit of overhead. We have to create a variable increment the variable with every step of the loop, making sure that we change its value in the appropriate spot, that is, after Alonzo says its value and not before. And at the end, we're left with a variable that doesn't have any real function. As I say, there's no real harm there, but it seems a little untidy. So what's another way that we could rewrite this kind of loop with a for loop? You'll find the for loop located, again, in the control palette. It's another C-shaped block, but it has slots for two numbers. These numbers mark the beginning and the end of its range. The variable you see inside the block is a built-in iterator. It will automatically increment as the loop progresses. So let's rewrite our simple counting program using the for block. Then we'll bring it onto the scripting area. You see the iterator right there, 1 to 10. And all I need to do to have the same effect as we did before, go back to looks. We're going to say, I can just drag this iterator right there. And we'll change it to 0.5. And let's run it. So you can see that we achieved the same effect, but with a lot less hassle. At the end of this for loop, we don't have to worry about any dangling variables. The iterator belongs to the scope of the block and vanishes from view, so to speak, after the for loop ends. We're going to come back to this concept of scope in a later video, so keep it in mind. For now, let me teach you two final tips that will make you a for loop expert. One is that you can make the loop run backwards by starting with a higher number in the first slot and then a lower number in the second slot. For instance, we can count from 10 to 1 backwards that way. Maybe that's a good effect if you want to simulate the launch of a spacecraft. Let's try that out. So I can switch costumes over here to a spacecraft, go back to the scripting area. All I need to do is to change this from 10 to 1, and we have our launch sequence. A second tip is that you can change the name of the iterator. While programmers commonly use i as the label for an iterator, you can change the name to anything you like. 
So if it helps you to remember its value, try changing the I to count or counter. Let's see how we do that. We just click on the I here, and you can override it to say counter, if we can spell it correctly. And you just have to remember that you want to change the variable inside the loop to counter as well. And there we go again. Same effect. Okay, that's it for today. I promised a brief video on simplifying loops with for loops and no need to create counter variables. So let me stop there. I don't want to leave any loose ends in this video. But I will see you for something a little bit more complicated in my next video. Bye-bye for now.